Here we go, the, the epic battle continues with Descent. That doesn't sound good. Is this a flashback or did I miss something? This is back in the day, right? It's showing their their conversation when that was happening. Damn. Oh no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Stop. Yes. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep it keep it moving. Stop it. Stop stop thinking. Stop thinking. Shut up. Shut up. Marco died of natural causes. And by that I mean a, a non-human titan. <laughs> That's natural causes in this world. Why don't we skip this episode? <laughs> skip. Skip. Well, here we go. <laughs> Marcus was very intelligent. Too intelligent for his own good. Don't do it, Reiner. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But don't do it, Reiner. Oh, no, no, don't ask Annie. Don't ask any for help. Reiner, man, you just blew it. You could've just let him go. That's just as bad. It's just as bad. Descent. <laughs> Descent. My feelings for Reiner. Descent. What is it? What is it that would make this worth it? I mean, honestly, it doesn't... It doesn't matter. Like, it's wrong. But they don't want to do it, so what is worth all this, I wonder? It's gotta be that there are more people at stake, including people they care about. Or maybe everyone. Which doesn't make it right. This is wrong no matter what, like I said, but... The stakes have gotta be really high. Really high. Evil race? Evil race? Oh, God, I feel so bad for Marco. Oh, man, no wonder Annie was so messed up and just done with everything. Was that the the gear that John John found? Yeah. Yeah. Look at what you've done. <sighs> but the shoulder pat. The shoulder pat. <laughs>
thinking about how to act is like, don't do things you know to be wrong. And this is like the most wrong, you know? It's hard for me to think of anything more wrong than this, at least in terms of what resonates with me. And I believe that to be true no matter what the stakes turn out to be. The only thing the stakes will change is me understanding where they went wrong, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, he kicked his ass. Who is this guy? And what would that be? Why? Yeah, good luck with that. That never works. And he's probably the happiest she's ever been right now. Because she's asleep and unconscious. What the? Oh, it's this duck face thing. He's very good at talking. I feel like they have a huge advantage, strategically, because they have coffee. <laughs> really, how have the scouts been managing all this time? All these late nights and early mornings. I guess that brings us up to roughly the present. And the question is, where is Berthold Toto? Berthold should, should be the leader of this duo, honestly. Reiner's out. Yes, it is. Why are you lying? No one's gonna get a happy ending, though. Oh, yeah, Ymir. Where is she? What's she up to? It's so confusing, you know? Because I still can't help but love them. I mean, they're bros. They've been through everything together. They understand each other's pain. I just feel like they're just stupid. Like, just these stupid kids, you know? What have you done? My beautiful... <laughs> my beautiful Reinhold! You threw it away. Personally, I, I think that the best viewpoint to have, even if it's not the total truth, is that whatever happens, what you do is your own responsibility. So I say all this not to absolve them, but just to, I guess, explain some of the circumstances of it. They obviously believe it's very important, and... I feel like it's probably just a function of how they were raised, what they were taught to believe, and what they were pushed into. I mean, they must have been soldiers since they were children, basically. They're just, they're child soldiers, right? Ah, it's sticky. That's what I call a sticky situation. All that said, I don't want them to die. No, I don't think so. I don't think that's totally how he feels. Yeah. They're good people. It's a relief to me that they feel that way. Yeah, it's one of the biggest problems. There's no communication. Nobody talks things out. Yeah, yeah. The audience as well. Oh, Reiner's uh, Bertholdt's in backpack guy. It was a signal. Here comes Bert Holt flying in. <laughs> and all the scouts are gathered around him. Drink? <laughs> what, what? Dark liquid. Just call a coffee. It's all right. I like how the music continues for the mid-roll card. Aaron was bait, but Reiner was also bait in a way. The ultimate move, falling with your mouth open. Does that mean killing Reiner? He couldn't do it. Yeah, they're bros. They got him pretty good. You underestimated the Thunder Spears. Something's ending. <laughs> Something's gonna end. Bertolt's kindness gave them a chance. Yes, thank you, Armin. My man. I, I think Bertolt probably wants this on some level. Everyone reasonable wants this on some level. That's not... That wasn't it. <laughs> that was not it, Bertolt. Okay, but explain. Keep after it, Armin. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, Armin, the, the master manipulator. He's dangerous, man. He's wise to the game. I think part of him wants it. Keep asking questions. Keep at it. <gasps> wow, he's actually an amazing fighter. Yeah, that's one of the weirdest things about this fight is that this episode has been a huge twist for them. They've definitely taken a villainous turn with the whole Marco reveal, but it's their bro-ship, their humanity, that's giving the scouts a chance to even fight them. I mean, Berthold could have just said screw Reiner and transformed and taken a whole handful of the soldiers with him. Also, that's the second time Mikasa forced the violence. Although, this time I feel like Berthold already made up his mind. If it was me, I would have liked to have given Armin the full chance at that, but it did seem like a very slim hope that he would actually talk him out of it. Berthold felt convicted. He has more resolve, and he fought really well. Is that why Berthold wanted him to move? No, not you too, Bertholt. Whoa. <gasps> Damn. Those are all disposable scouts, right? Nobody we cared about? Give him a chance to show up. And he's a big boy. Not looking so great there, Reiner. No, no, no. Hanji made an invention that kept her safe. That's a complete suicide mission. And you have no time to think either. Armin's strong, but I don't know if he's prepared for this. God, the imagery in this is so amazing, and the music. Oh no! <laughs> no! I feel like Reiner and Berthold are just expendable to this beast thing. Oh my god, that, that episode, Descent. Woo! They really uh, <laughs> turned up the heat for the show. It's, it's fun. <laughs> Pretty riveting, heart-wrenching. This episode is absolutely horrifying and also amazing. <laughs> it's fantastic. Did Hanji just die? It was really unclear. I mean, that would be a very bold choice having her die off screen. But wow, the setup though. The setup for the next couple episodes, unbelievable. To have this core crew <laughs> going against Bertholdt, who's like new and resolved Bertholdt. I'm gonna destroy everyone, Bertholdt. The world is cruel, Bertholdt. And to know that even defeating Bertholdt is not victory because you got this whole thing outside. You got the whole Beast Titan and Duck Titan and all these other Titans. I just want to say how much I appreciate Armin for at least making the attempt to figure Bertholdt out and to get a conversation going because I feel like Bertholdt knows things that they also need to know. And Bertholdt doesn't seem to be very forthcoming with that information, probably because he sees them dying as just an essential and inevitable thing. So why bother, right? But I do really want to know, and I can't wait to figure it out. And I am pretty convinced that at least in their minds, there's a really good reason. It must be that they're weighing things in terms of results, right? They must be thinking about things, not in terms of the morality of each individual action, but on the risks they see of this society. And I'm guessing that has to be something like annihilation for a lot of people because then in their minds the way they're thinking about it it's probably something like well marco dies at our hands or everyone dies you know it has to be at that scale because they're not heartless they're not mindless killing machines they are capable of great friendship and camaraderie and you can see how much it affected them not just in that scene but like ongoing you know, that's something they've been carrying with them, clearly. They're very distraught as people. They're not healthy, obviously. So it's got to be something like that. That means it's something that we have to know and, and the other 
scouts have to know in order to make any meaningful choice going forward. You know, I feel like a lot of the characters, or almost all the characters who have expressed their worldview, are sort of dancing around an idea, and they're they're not that far off from something good. The idea that a lot of them seem to share is that life, human life, is chaotic and cruel, and that's just a byproduct of nature, right? Like, nature is chaotic and cruel. And that the dreams you have, the ideals you have, the perfect world you envision, is a fantasy because of the cruelty of the world, and so your priority, or the only thing you can do at all, is just to survive. It's like, you know, you're dealt a cruel hand, so cruelty it is, you know, like I'm just going to perpetuate cruelty. But I think if you go one step farther than that, there's something beautiful on the other side, which is that, yes, things are naturally chaotic and cruel. That is a thing that exists. That's real. So because of that, shouldn't you do your best to not add to that cruelty? You know, doesn't that in some way illuminate a, a purpose to resist the cruelty, to not be that cruelty? Isn't that the only practical way out? And furthermore, if you have no control, if it's just this chaotic world where just terrible things happen all the time, shouldn't your focus then switch to just things that are within your control, meaning your your own actions and what you feel is, is right or wrong, you know, without trying to reshape the world or take advantage of others or do terrible things in the, in the name of like some fantasy you have about what the world could be. I feel like partly the reason why these people have this experience is not entirely because nature is like that, but because they believe the world is like that and they perpetuate these things. Like this is a world of their own creation. It's these very values that have created this world. World. I think part of what they don't realize is that they see themselves fighting back against this cruel world, but in doing so, they're adopting the means of that cruel world, and so they're perpetuating that cruel world. They are the very problems that they see. And there's a cyclical nature to all this, right? Like, this is happening because of people doing things like that, you know, because of of people thinking in this sort of like ends justify the means type of thing and doing great damage and great harm which then causes other people to experience tragedy and to internalize the fact that well life is just unfair and cruel it's very difficult to experience cruelty and then not become cruel but i think that probably is the solution and so they're all sort of the same they're all sort of doing the same thing as evidenced by the fact that they all have kind of the same monologue that they do about cruelty and nature and things like that in summary all of you are crazy you're just you're all crazy except for erwin and levi they're cool but anyway the fact that i'm feeling all this is great right? Like, that's that's what I'm here for. This is a great example of things that, like, hurt, but you love. You know what I mean? It's difficult to do that well, I think, but this arc so far is doing such a good job of that. I'm so, like, upset, but having a wonderful time. You know what I mean? But yeah, so that's the end for this time on a more positive and cheerful note. I gotta give a, a huge thank you to all my, my patrons once again for all the support. A special shout out this week to those who joined the top tier. Jet Set Radio, Journal, Nova Boon, Simon, and Dwayne Glasgow. Thank you to you. Thank you to all patrons. Thank you to everybody for watching. For all the constant support, you guys are the absolute best. Love you guys, and I'll see you for what I hear is a very, very exciting couple of episodes. Which, I mean, if it's anything like this. <laughs>